Hey everybody, welcome back to the homestead. Well today we thought we'd take some time to answer some of the questions you guys have had for us. It seems like over the past month or so we've been getting more questions than ever and this is the best way that we have to just sit down and answer them for you so that we make sure you actually get the real answer to the questions that you have. We're gonna start off with actually showing you the answer to one of our most asked questions over the last couple weeks. So let's go, we're gonna show you. So the first question that we want to answer for you guys today is how in the heck are we going to get this big bale of hay through this opening right here over the top of this bar on our hay cradle? Now for those of you who don't watch every one of our videos, first of all, shame on you. Second of all, let me explain to you where this question came from. We did a video recently where we were building this structure over the top of our hay cradle to help protect the hay from the rain. And we built this out of cattle panels and we put it over the top so that when it rains the bale will be inside and all the rain will stay off the bale or at least most of the rain. A lot of people had concerns that there's no way I'm going to be able to use my tractor to lift the bale up over this top bar and get it through this hole up here. And they're absolutely right. There is no way that I could use my tractor to do that. Part of this is my fault. I didn't explain it well in the first video that we did, but let me show you why this is still gonna work perfectly. So this is the end of the hay cradle where you can load the bale of hay. It's got two pins here that come out on each side. And this front comes off so that you can load your bale of hay without having to go up and over. So I apologize, I didn't explain that well on the first video, but as you can see, once this is off, the bale of hay should go right in. Now this is the very first time we're loading a bale of hay since we built this top on it. So let's give it a try and make sure it works. So there you go. You can see that once that front panel is off, the bale slides right in. And I think this is going to work perfectly to help protect it from at least some of the weather. So I hope that answers that question. Let's move on to your other questions. Well, it's always good when you have an idea in your head and it works out like it did with that hay bale. You guys had me a little worried, I'll be honest, uh, after some of your comments uh, questioning whether or not the hay bale was gonna fit. Hey, you know, just kind of made me second guess myself, so I sure am glad that it fit in there. Another question that we've been getting a lot lately is about our dogs. Whether we have dogs, hey, we used to see that you had dogs, but we haven't seen them in a long time. What happened to the dogs? Well, we still have two dogs. We have two beagles. Their names are Bubba and Rosie, and they spend most of their time in the house. In fact, let's go see what they're up to right now. This is pretty much what they do all day, every day. You might remember that we had a third dog. Her name was Mabel. She was a chocolate lab. 
just recently Kevin's brother, his wife and daughter came to visit and they absolutely fell in love with Mabel. They were looking for another dog for their family. They have another dog. They have a lot of guests and visitors in their house. We all thought it would be a great idea for Mabel to move to Wisconsin and go home with them. And she's having such a great time. Yeah, she actually is doing really well there. They have a nice fenced in yard that she can run and play and not get into as much trouble as she did here. Because here she loved to just, you know, she had too much freedom here when she was just outside. So there is perfect for her and she's having a good life. It'll be interesting though to see because we brought her with us from Arizona. It'll be interesting to see how she likes all the snow in Wisconsin this winter, but I bet she's gonna fit in awesome. So the next question is, how is our fall garden doing? Or do we have a fall garden? <laughs> in the past, we've always had a fall garden, but we'll be honest with you guys that this year, we've decided not to plant a fall garden. There's a few reasons for that. Uh, the first one is that the garden that we would normally use as our fall garden, we're completely redoing this fall and winter. We're actually going to, you know, take up all of the black plastic that we have on the ground. And then in front of that garden, we actually have several raised beds right now that we built out of logs from the woods. Well, those logs are starting to just rot and fall apart. They've been there several years now. And so, we had to think long and hard about if we wanted to either replace them or do something else. And we've actually decided that we so much enjoy growing in the ground with the woven ground cover that we're just going to get rid of the raised bed gardens all together and incorporate that area into the main garden itself. And the second reason that we don't have a fall garden is that we have a second greenhouse that we'll, we will be putting up soon. And our plan is to clear out our existing greenhouse, put in some raised beds there in the fall so that we can do some fall and winter growing in there. And then we'll also put up the second greenhouse so that we can use that for all of our plant starts in the spring. Right. Originally, we were gonna build raised beds in the new greenhouse we're putting up, but we decided it makes more sense and we can get it done faster if we put the raised beds in our current greenhouse. And then we have all winter to put up the second one so that we're ready for spring. It just takes a little of the pressure off doing it that way. And so we're hoping that most of the things we would have normally grown in a fall garden can be grown all winter long inside the greenhouse. And maybe a spring garden won't be necessary if we can grow a lot of those same vegetables uh, throughout the winter and in the early, early spring. Right. That way we can concentrate all of our energy and attention on growing seedlings, planting our summer garden, and selling those plant starts at the farmer's market. Right. Yeah, we're really always looking for ways to kind of spread out the work so that it doesn't seem so overwhelming all at once. So if we can use some of the time in the winter when it's normally slow and we're normally not doing the gardening in the winter, if we can do that inside the greenhouse, that would be great. And then we, you know, it'll help free up our spring for sure. Yeah. You know what, you guys, I think we should go check back in with the beagles. Right. Maybe they're doing something different See now. See what they're doing. We also want a chance to explain a decision that we had made a couple months ago probably already. We had some more questions about where are the girls. We have two daughters, they're both teenagers now, and we've had them in a few of our videos. Our kids go to school and we do most of our filming and a lot of our homestead work while they're gone. So you don't see them or haven't seen them a lot in videos in the past. but. Maybe a month or two ago, we made the decision to not have them in our videos anymore. Originally, that decision was because of some things that were going on within YouTube itself. YouTube started to go through some changes about protecting children who are on, in YouTube videos and on YouTube channels. They started disabling the viewer's ability to comment on videos that had children and channels who had children in the videos in order to protect the children from bad people who were wanting to do bad things. Right. And ultimately, that was affecting 
channels and their success. And so we wanted to back off that and make sure that everything was going to be okay with our kids and everything was going to be with our okay with our channel. And so we decided not to have the girls on our videos anymore. In the meantime, we've made the permanent decision for another reason. Now that our kids are getting a little bit older and they're kind of going out into the community by themselves without us around, especially our oldest daughter, uh, it's becoming more obvious that, you know, we're not always going to be there to protect her. Uh, just recently, she's had a couple instances where people have recognized her uh, from our YouTube channel and come up to her and talk to her, and it's just made her very uncomfortable. Now, nobody has ever done anything wrong. Nobody's been inappropriate. Uh, but as, you know, a 16-year-old girl, it just made her uncomfortable that people know who she is and she has no idea who they are when they just randomly walk up to her. So now that the girls are getting older, we want to honor their privacy, protect their privacy, and make them feel comfortable in the community we live in. So we're really glad that you guys are concerned about the girls, especially Grace after her car accident. Uh, you know, both of the girls are doing great. They're having a great school year. And so uh, we hope that this will just help explain why you're not going to see them in any of our upcoming videos. You may see them here and there down the road, you never know. But for now, the decision is that, you know, they want some privacy and they do have decided to just, you know, kind of stay off of YouTube. So let's run back in and see what the dogs are up to. Maybe they're doing something different now. Well, another question that we're getting a lot is about our milking system and a lot of questions about why are we using a milking machine to milk one cow rather than hand milking. There are several reasons why we aren't hand milking and we're using a milking machine. Uh, first of all, we think that overall we have cleaner milk, less opportunity for contamination from things falling into the milk bucket from the environment off of her body, hair, um, pieces of manure, dirt, sticks, hay, that kind of thing aren't falling into a bucket. We just think that the cleanest milk that we can provide to ourselves and other people is important. Another reason is that's just what she's been used to. Right. Even though Hope will allow you to either hand milk or machine milk. She's been machine milked for a long time, uh, so she's very used to that. She lets down quickly. Everything goes really quickly. Uh, we just think that she enjoys that more. Also, we're just not really good at hand milking yet. So right. we think that overall she will be milked out better, which is better for her udder, better for milk supply. She'll be milked out better by a machine than hand milked by us. And while we do probably spend a little bit extra time on the cleaning end than if we just had a bucket to wash out, we're okay with that right now. Um, and that's just what we're gonna do. Um, everybody is different. If you like to hand milk and you can do it really quickly and don't want the mess and don't want to clean up, then go ahead and we are enjoying what we're doing. We're enjoying the process this way and that's why we're using Right. We still milker. feel like it gives us a good opportunity to bond with Hope. Uh, she, you know, is just so friendly now that we spend a lot of time with her. So we don't feel like we're missing anything that way. We just feel like in all in all, this is a much more streamed line, easy process for us. And since we're busy, uh, that's important. We just need to, you know, get her milked out, get everything in the house and get it ready to consume. So the next question that we've gotten a lot is what are you going to do with like three, two and a half to three gallons of milk every single day? Well, there's a lot to that. Uh, we're doing a lot of different things with it. Uh, we are selling some of our milk. Uh, but we're also making uh, a lot of butter, which you just saw this video that Sarah did a couple days ago about making butter. Uh, we've made a lot of what we call farm cheese. And just recently, we both have learned how to make mozzarella cheese. So we've made quite a bit of mozzarella cheese as well, as well as homemade ice cream and homemade yogurt. So overall, our goal with having Hope, our milk cow, is to replace as much of the dairy products that we can. 
from the store though so we don't have to buy it anymore and so that's overall our intention is to use as much as we want much as we can of the milk to replace all of those from the grocery store we're having a great time we haven't tried everything under the sun yet but we'd really like to right it's just going to take us a little bit of time and we're excited to start sharing some of that with you guys right now kind of another part to that same question is a lot of you have asked you know are we going to be selling homemade butter, homemade yogurt, homemade cheese at the farmer's market next year. Uh, and the answer to that is no, we won't, uh, because here in Missouri, that's against the law. Uh, we can sell raw milk, but we have to sell it directly from the farm, directly to the person who's going to use it. It can't be processed in any way. It can't be turned into anything else by us before we sell it. So, no, we won't be selling any of those things uh, here in Missouri. In order to do that, you have to process all of those things in a USDA-inspected kitchen, uh, which we don't have, and we don't plan on, you know, getting set up to be able to do that. So, we can sell our raw milk, which we have been doing some of already, and we're hoping to get a few more customers for that. And, you know, maybe we'll print out instructions for people or point them to some of our videos so that, after they buy our milk, they can go home and learn how to make those things themselves. So you guys, I hope that we answered some of the questions that you have been having over the last couple of weeks or months. Uh, if you have further questions, we'd love to answer them. Make sure you put them uh, on the bottom in the comment section below. Uh, we do review these questions after these types of videos to get more ideas for another video. So go ahead and do that. Hey, if you're not a subscriber yet, please consider subscribing. We would really appreciate it. And share our channel and our videos with other people who you think might enjoy them. And until next time, thank you so much for stopping by the homestead. Take care and God bless. God bless.